Good, good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Church as we celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph. Um, our Mass intention this morning is for the intentions of Mac Cole by Kathy and the family. Thank you for the gift of your presence here this morning, those who are joining us online as well, and thank you for following our protocols. I invite you to please stand and we'll join together in singing Led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit of our God, we go to fast and pray. With Christ into the wilderness, we join his paschal way. Rend not your garments, rend your heart, back your lives to me. Says our kind, whose reign is liberty. Led by the Spirit, we confront temptation face to face, and know full well we must rely on God's redeeming grace. On bread alone we cannot live, but nourished by the Word. We seek the will of God to do, this is our drink and food. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather together on this feast of St. Joseph, mindful of the, of the presence of Jesus among us now, let us pause a few moments, acknowledging our sins, seeking God's mercy, to prepare ourselves to encounter Jesus once again in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you continue to nourish and strengthen us with your body and your blood. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us, your disciples, into the world to be your witnesses, signs of your presence and love. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. The son of David will live forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever, 
In heaven, you had confirmed your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. He shall say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of, us, of all of us. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our Father in the sight of God in whom we believe, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the Father of many nations. According to what he said, thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who was called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. So again, we celebrate the feast of St. Joseph. Um, and there has been growing reflection on St. Joseph in the church's life over these last few centuries especially. He's the patron of the Universal Church, patron of fam fathers and families, as well as the patron for a happy death. Um, the beautiful thing about Joseph is, kind of like Mary, he trusted and he let himself be led. He didn't have to be in control of the situation. If he was in control of the situation, it wouldn't have worked out like it did in the scriptures. He learned to surrender. He learned to put his trust in God. He surrendered to the greater will, um, the will of God. Our first reading that Dave proclaimed speaks about the dynasty of David um, coming to fulfillment in the Messiah. We know to be Jesus. And St. Joseph protected the fulfillment of that prophecy in the Holy Family. 
And of course, he guarded the child Jesus and Mary. Um, our second reading shows Abraham's faith in God's providence. St. Joseph ultimately showed a similar faith when he trusted God's word, even though the circumstances of the conception were not comprehensible to him. He is the patron of fathers at a time when fathers need trust in God because fatherhood is a challenge these days, as we well know. We also know the importance of fathers in the lives of families, in the lives of children, and the important role that they play in their formation. So as we honor Joseph, we honor his, his complete trust in God. He was truly a man of God, a disciple, really of his son. And at the same time, we're called to reflect upon our own lives as to how we move through life, trusting in God's providence, trusting in God's love, ultimately, rather than ourselves. I invite you to please stand as we bring our prayers and petitions before our God. Let us pray for the church, the people of God, that like St. Joseph, we may continue to grow in trusting God's providence, God's plan, and surrendering our lives more fully to that plan, we pray to the Lord. Let us continue to pray for peace in our world, that we as individuals may be instruments of peace and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are sick in need of prayers for healing. We continue to pray for those battling the coronavirus, those battling cancer, the people in our hospitals and nursing homes, those struggling with addictions and mental illness. May the healing spirit of Christ uplift, renew, and strengthen them. For the sick, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the intentions of Mac Cole. We pray to the Lord. And for your prayers and petitions. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we're grateful that we can gather together on this feast of St. Joseph to give you our thanks and our praise. Continue to open up our minds and our hearts to your Holy Spirit, that like St. Joseph, we may trust in your plan. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We 
We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on the solemnity of St. Joseph to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar. As they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. We'll conclude by singing the last verse of our opening hymn, Led by the Spirit, found on your song sheet. Led by the Spirit, now sing praise God the Trinity, the source of life, the living Word made flesh to set us free. Blowing where it will to make us friends of God. This mystery far beyond our reach, yet near in He 